Hello chaps and chapettes. Now in the last video we looked at the hazards of electricity and what can go wrong. And we're now going to look at some safety things put in place to prevent problems from occurring. So the first one of those is a fuse. And by the end of this video you're going to know what a fuse is and you can understand how a fuse can protect a circuit from too much current. You should also be able to select an appropriate fuse for a circuit and there may be a little bit of calculation in there on the exam questions you'll have to do. So the challenge today is to discuss why fuses may not always be useful in protecting circuits, and you can probably work that out for yourselves. Let me know in the comment section below. So what actually is a fuse? It's really nothing complicated. It's a very thin bit of wire that is designed to melt if you have a certain amount of current going across it. And that's all it is. Um, if you have a 3 amp fuse, then three amps of current will go through them. If you have four amps, then the, the wire will melt and it's gonna break your contact for your circuit. If you break that contact, as in the wire just melts away and they're no longer touching each other, as in the ends of the fuse aren't touching each other, then current can no longer flow and your circuit is gonna be protected. And you can find these things pretty much in most electronics. If you have a look at like a, a plug socket or something like that, you can generally see um, words 3 amp, 5 amp fuse, or something like that written on them. And um, well, there you go, they're everywhere really. So I'm going to show you what some fuses look like now, and then we'll go on to uh, the theory of it all. Right, so shall we look at some fuses? Now I'm going to show you what most modern fuses look like. And they look like something like that, which has a nice little ceramic casing, so that, uh, well, you'll see why it's a ceramic casing in a second with some metal contacts on the outside, and it's a little cylinder like that, which, well, you can see a three amp one there, five amps, and 13, nice and simple to use. And you'd usually plug it into something um, that looks like a plug socket or something like that. Now this isn't really what a fuse looks like. I'm gonna show you what a fuse really is, and it's one of these, or one of these, and it's just a wire. It literally is just a wire with a known set of resistance. Um, you can do that by thickness or by material. And when you pass a current through that thing, it's going to get hot and it's going to melt. Now, obviously, something like this is a bit dangerous to be having dangling around inside a circuit. So the modern solution is to wrap it up inside one of these tubes. And then when that's busted, you just throw it away. Um, in the old days, they used to use these things, which used to be the old equivalent of a circuit breaker. Um, see, this is a 15 amp one, and it's basically got a tiny bit of fuse wire inside this thing in between two fairly chunky contacts. And there you go. When this thing blows and melts, you're going to reattach a fuse wire inside. Now, you can imagine that was a quite difficult thing to do um, when it's late at night and you've accidentally blown your fuse in your house using a new toaster and you'll be trying to do this thing in the dark. So this is the reason why circuit breakers were used instead of this. But we'll have a look at how this thing works now. Now, I could show you the effect of a fuse using this thing. I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to use this really tiny piece of iron wool here, um, just to show you what the effect is like. So just gonna turn the voltage way down on this. Okay, current on. And then, if we apply more voltage to this, we should get some current flowing, and you can see how a fuse works. Hmm. Oh, it's warming up. Can definitely smell it. Or not, in fact, okay. Oh. Okay, that thing actually just broke already. Okay, one second. Let's try that again. Okay, voltage on, and, oh, there we go. Small little spark there, and it's already melted. So a little there, spark there, and melted. So the idea here is that the things are so, so thin that the resistance on it is quite high. We put a current across it, and you can see that little bit of well, let's just zoom in on that.
Yeah, there we go. Small bit of thing that looks like dirt on my finger. That is actually the melted iron that has melted. So the iron wool, it's a current going across it, it gets really hot, it melts, and then it breaks apart, breaking the circuit contact. Okay. Okay, so you may be asked in an exam question, uh, how much current, or sorry, what size of fuse you need to have for a particular circuit. And there's a couple of things you need to think about this one. First of all, you need to think about not allowing too much current to go through because that will melt the circuit, um, sorry, will melt the, damage the circuit that you want to protect. And you also can't have a fuse which is too small, as in it doesn't allow enough current to allow the circuit to work. So we're going to do some calculations. Now I'm going to show you a brief example and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we're going to work out what size of fuse we need to have there to protect our really expensive looking lamp here. Okay, so this lamp has a resistance of 1.5 ohms and we have it hooked up to a battery which has 6 volts. We hooked up to a cell in fact with 6 volts. Now we need to work out what fuse to go in there. And we have a couple of options. We have our, here we go, 3 amp fuse. We have our 5 amp fuse. And we also have our 13 amp fuse. So we need to decide which one's going to be the most appropriate. So, first of all, we need to work out how much current this thing actually needs to go through it. So, with that, we start off with our first equation. Ohm's law equation, V equals I R. Do a quick rearrangement, I is equal to V over R. Plug in our values. 1.5. And that's going to equal, always use your calculators during exams. Six divided by 1.5. And that's going to equal to four and we need to remove our units, amps, okay? So our choices before were three amp fuse, or a five amp fuse, or a 13 amp fuse. Now we can't use the three amp one because that would, well, that would actually just damage, well, that would actually fail before the lamp would even be working properly. So we can't use that one. Um, 13 amp fuse would probably get to the point where we damage our lamp before we'd ever get to, uh, well, we could get to the point where we damage our lamp. So get rid of that one. So our answer is going to be a 5 amp fuse. And there you go. Nice and simple. So there you go. That's what a fuse is. And by now you should know what they are and you should understand how you can use them to protect your circuitry. What you should also be able to do is be able to select an appropriate fuse for a circuit. Make sure that you go back and can do those calculations. It's a really straightforward one. It just uses the Ohm's law equation and it's one that can come up. Plus the Ohm's law equation is a very simple one to get marks on during your exams. Now what you need to think about is why fuses might not be always be useful for protecting circuits. And I just want you to consider you're allowing something inside your device to get hot. And I'll leave it at that one there. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. So you should never do this, by the way. But here we go. <laughs> there we go. Lovely little fireworks. Oh, look at that. How fun is that?